Hi, friends. Today, I will present my April favorites, but first, if it's your first time here, hi. I'm Alicia. Thank you so much for clicking on my video. And if you are returning, well, thank you for visiting me again. Kinky Sweat stands for my kinky hair and sweat life. I am a fitness professional who loves things all movement and beauty. If you want to check out what I do in between the makeup, so you can head over to my Instagram. All time stamps will be down below. I'm sure you have already seen the length of the video, but not only will I have time stamps, we have the chapters on the time bar right there you want to skip over to whatever portion maybe you just want to see the list in the description box i understand we don't want to be here all day with that said i also have b-roll to present alongside a lot of these products that i have as favorites for april as well as a playlist i'll remember to put it together so if you want to see more of these products in action if you want to see more swatches more demos i'll make sure to put those videos down below on the playlist and those videos will have their own timestamps for that said product if you just wanted to skip over and watch that footage all right i have no i don't i'm a liar yes my notebook we have quite a bit of favorites because i wanted to just go beyond makeup this month we have nail polish, we have hair, we got a little bit of skincare, okay? So let's start off with the skincare. And I was so pleased to have finally purchased this product and use it for, I think, for the majority of the month of April. And that is our friend, Desi Perkins. Her Claro Que Si Vitamin C Glow Serum. This is from her, her own company, Desi desi she has her sunglasses which i have a pair of they're cool you want to see them oh for heaven's sake i don't know where they are but they're these ones they're super cool they are a mood i will share though my ultimate favorites for the month but let's let's finish with claro que si the packaging i adore is glass with this textured cap and you have the pump bottle here and the vitamin c derivatives this formula relies on are tetrahexyl decyl ascorbate as well as the the ethyl one i don't think this is the same percentage as the tetrahexyl decyl ascorbate percentage in my glytone serum which is why i think is is significantly more expensive i do however enjoy the texture equally so it is fragrance free it has a really nice silky spread it doesn't leave my skin feeling dry or overly dewy greasy hydrated i think it sits on a a nice spectrum of a natural finish and also lays beautifully under my moisturizer my moisturizer of choice for that day and i think what's also outstanding is that it's reasonably hear me out i think reasonably priced for a vitamin c serum is 64 dollars in addition to the vitamin c derivatives which are very high on the list you have other antioxidant ingredients that desi says that they're at a an active dosage i'm not too sure about that because we are usually told that if the ingredients are not in the first five they ain't doing nothing whereas the first five here we have the water ethyl ascorbic acid the tetrahexyl decyl ascorbate proponidiol coconut alkynes polyester 4 and then all the other extracts like the mango fruit extract the avocado fruit extract they're all on the bottom i'm more concerned with the vitamin c derivatives as long as those are on the tippity top top then i'm good i have to say although i was messing with my face this month fortunately i do think it helps with overall brightening and evening especially if you suffer from post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation like i do it definitely lessens and softens the pigmentation so it doesn't look as severe it doesn't look as discolored and again i'm a fan of the the lightweight texture is very airy and soft it's not super an, a super heavy cream but it's not too much of a lightweight serum either I think it sits between those textures on the spectrum and I just enjoy the application it doesn't smell like odd vitamin c serums especially uh, l-ascorbic acid serum which when you open that thing the minute it gets exposed to light and air it's done it's done it doesn't have that smell at all even after you apply it because sometimes it just kind of like appears and like i'm here i'm smelling not at all so i really enjoy this product i'm gonna use it uh, until it's done it does have a six month expiration shelf life so i would uh highly recommend if you 
are finishing a, a serum of whatever is in your regimen, you were looking into the claro que si that you finish that first and then commit to this so that it does not expire. You get the most out of the formula. The next skincare product that proved itself to be a favorite for April is the I Unique Centella Calming Gel Cream. This is one of the products that I got for my Yes Style video. I'll link that video down below. At first, I was unsure because it did it does have a little bit of fragrance. I think it, this is the one with the bergamot oil in it but man was I blown away by how well this calming gel cream performs despite it being a gel texture it's just beautifully lightweight and although a gel it doesn't leave the skin dry I'm not sure if you've ever applied the you know these gel cream hybrids that upon application it's like oh this is nice and then it just kind of evaporates like nothing is left this stays on the skin and the skin is left moisturized, maybe not as much as if I were to apply my Good Molecule Silicone Free Moisturizer, but I think ideal for oilier skin types or for those who just want something a little more refreshing in texture when it comes to their moisturizing step. And ideal maybe for one who is on the drier part of the spectrum and they need like a little bit of a booster before they apply their creamier or more lotion types of moisturizers. I especially think this is optimal for sunscreen. Now I know with the whole thing about the Japanese and the Korean sunscreens, they're, they're, they're on the radar of like being fake or not. When we figure out which one works the best for us that actually works, I think this is ideal to apply under your sunscreen. Again, because it's lightweight, it's not gonna feel heavy on the skin, it's going to provide that hydration, but offer that layer of moisturization before you go in with your sunscreen. And this has Centella Asiatica leaf water and tea tree leaf water is very very calming and healing in nature so if your skin is inflamed or just needs a little bit of like whoo, saw this product right here I need to buy another two. Oh, one more skincare product one more skincare product thank you to Jordan Samuel we all know Jordan Samuel he's the best for sending me some of the top selling Jordan Samuel products he recently sent me the matinee cream cleanser the matinee cream cleanser is the newest addition to his cleanser line and man this was a pleasure to use i use it usually after my first step or sometimes i don't sometimes i don't wear makeup that day it is you know one of those stay in the house all day type of situations because sometimes my allergies be killing me so i'll use the cleanser that's a lotiony type but it's so nice to use a lotion type of a cleanser that doesn't sting when you apply it, especially on the portions that have been a little raw, okay, from all the nose blowing. And it's so soft. It doesn't have an artificial fragrance to it. It just smells like the silt. The, the main ingredient is silt that just picks up all the debris and, and, and trash from your skin in a way that's very gentle, not stripping, and it rinses clean. One of the reasons why I thoroughly enjoy this product simply because uh, the texture of it is sublime it doesn't overwhelm my senses it's very soft very creamy on the skin and I just love to take time and using circular motions to work the product to work the cleanser rather on my skin to make sure I'm picking up all that leftover dirt and pollution and and leftover skincare from the day and it was also nice to send me the after show treatment cleanser for sensitive skin i use that as a first step cleanser to kind of melt off the sunscreen and the makeup yes i'm back to i'm back to the second cleanse okay fam <laughs> there was a moment that i was just using one cleanser and some diet and some nights i do okay i go back and forth but i've been experimenting with different first cleanser formulas especially because the high mesh all clean cleansing balm is fragrant and because at this time my allergies are at a all-time high so anything that could possibly trigger me i just don't use for the meantime until the season passes so the fact that the after show treatment cleanser does not have any fragrance it feels really nice on the skin and sure when i rinse it off there is a little bit of a film but i think that's there because he explained on one of his ig live videos that it is formulated to leave the skin behind hydrated it kind of reminds me of the inky less oat cleansing balm although this has a little more slip than the oat cleansing balm oat cleansing balm a little more creamy and you you definitely gotta work it in you need a little more emulsification i love the combination of the after show treatment cleanser and the matinee cream cleanser it's a great duo 
leaving my skin fresh, clean, and not stripped. All right, I was mentioning sunglasses while talking about Claro que sí. Let me tell you how cool these things are. Now, I'm a huge fan of Moscot, M-O-S-C-O-T. They are the makers of these glasses here. I mean, the Miltsin. These are size 46, I believe, in the tortoise shell. Yes? Yes. They have different color frames. These are like for real, for real. I, I need these to see. And as someone who often wears glasses, I'm also one who wears contacts, you know, depending on the day. Sometimes I just rather have my glasses on. But then you are in the day where it's beautiful, it's sunny. I don't want to be switching my glasses to sunglasses back and forth. I could wear a hat, but I find sometimes the hat could only do so much when blocking out the sun from your eyes. So what Mascot also has, they have what they call clip-ons. They come in this nifty little sunglass sleeve. The clip-ons have these rubber claws, a really flexible band, so all you need to do is put them on me. Aren't these I look so cool. Friends, are you, can you even? I love the bar at the top. They come in silver and black. Sure, they put, they put just a tiny bit of weight on the frames, but not a lot. The fact that these are plastic already kind of sets up for a lighter feel. But can I just, I don't need them. I need them. I don't need them. I need them done. I can't get enough of these. I think these are so clever and it just makes for a seamless part of your day when you're, you're, you know, the sun is out, is not out. The sun is out, is not out. If you need some shielding from the sun, and not only does Mascot have clip-ons for the Miltsins, but they also have them for the Lemtosh, another style that Mascot carries, and another style. So it is so much fun. I'm considering getting like another pair of these like in a, in a clear beige and then wearing the gold. So much fun. I, I'm so happy I bought these. I can't tell you how easy it is when, if I'm trying to decide to wear my glasses or not, especially during the allergy season, like my eyes are very sensitive at the moment and sometimes to apply contacts, it's just not the greatest, okay? So when I insist on leaving my glasses on and it's a beautiful sunny day like this, I don't feel the need to, to put on sunglasses and yeah, I could get prescription sunglasses, but I don't wanna do that either, okay? So to have the clip-ons, the link will be down below, not affiliated, just so you, cause you need them, okay? You need them. Staying within the lifestyle category of things. I did get the Sonya G makeup bags. I got all six of them, fam. Was I, did I need to do that? Absolutely not. Was that necessary? No. Anything Sonia makes, I know it's going to be intentional, intelligent in design. It just is so thoughtful, especially when you open these and you use them. You immediately recognize that, yes, this is very much brush centric. I think she centers basically because she does have her own brush line. If you don't know, Sonya G brushes are the best. So when she released these bags, you can definitely see that it's all about the brushes. So don't feel though you have to limit yourself to just utilizing these holders for brushes. You could use them for anything. If you wanted to use these holders for your brow products, for your liners, for whatever can fit in here in this, in this diameter, I think these are so clever though. So you have these flaps that are clear and you have the zipper on the other side. This is like the double decker one. I think this is the biggest design out of the bunch. You have a back zipper here. These are all made in Japan. They have the diamond pattern inside with the Sonya G logo all throughout. And the front is simple. The outside is simple. It's this beautiful black vinyl with Sonya G here on the front. The red tabs with Sonya G on the fabric. I think the attention to detail is, is wonderful. And again, I think these are so cleverly designed. I didn't even open this one yet. This, this is still in the plastic bag. <laughs> this one is harder for me to use because I'm not practical when it comes to packing stuff. Like I have to pack the most. I gotta pack two blush brushes, two foundation brushes, two concealer brushes, 10 eyeshadow brushes. I've gotten better though. I have. I think this one is particularly perfect. Hold on. For her minis. 
There, it's like the perfect length. So you just drop them in there and the bristles don't catch on to the zipper. And you could take her towel, which is well loved and needs to be washed. You could slip it in here also um, with, with all the things, okay? You could fit a lot into this one. My favorite is this one. This is the longer one. It has a, look Look how much, this is just the eye section, okay? So you can put more face brushes on this side. Um, you got more holders on this side, look at that. So yes, it might be very brush centric, maybe too brush centric for some. This is where I have my face brushes. I don't mind it because, you know, I could just have this dedicated to my brushes if, if I really wanted to go in and bring everything and then use the double decker one for more makeup and then maybe use this one for just the makeup and the other one for the brushes. I get, however, if you don't have a lot of brushes that these designs might not be ideal for you. I totally get it. Maybe you're one to prefer, maybe like the Isom designs where it's just like one big section and you fill it up as you like. I totally get it. I, I recognize both. I love these, especially, this is perhaps, I think this is my favorite. The stand up, look at this thing. So you see it's as is, but you take these sections out. These have Velcro, hold on. These sections Velcro to the side. So when you take these out, it squeezes flat and then you could pack it. And when you're at your destination, you have something to put your brushes in. I can't tell you when I went to Maddie's house, I had to look for something to put my brushes in. Could I have used a brush holder like the cylindrical kinds? Yes. I do think, however, they could get a little squish and they also take up a lot of room in my luggage. Whereas something like this that lays flatter, I feel a little better for packing. And especially this, when this squishes flat, forget it. So convenient. So shout out to Sonergy for making those brush holders and makeup bags. Who knows, maybe she will create something that's more makeup centric versus brush centric. I'll figure it out. You know, I'll use the holders that don't have brushes for other things, bringing more liners or what have you, anything that fits into those slots. But right now, it's, it's nice. Pretty good. And lastly, before we go into the makeup, because, well, two things actually. Let me go into the hair. I love, oh my gosh, bread. I tried bread for the first time before the Sephora VIB Rouge Spring Sale event. I bought this before I got the second one during my haul video, but the item that I purchased as new was the hair mask. I praise the hair wash because I loved it's it's like a marshmallowy marshmallowy type of a texture. It's not overly sudsy, but I like how it detangles at the same time. I would recommend that your hair is super wet and that you apply this in sections. So I do low half, high half, and then I make sure I get it into my scalp. I feel my hair is clean without feeling stripped. Furthermore, moisturized and pretty detangled, I'd say, for using a shampoo. But this, first of all, you could just feel how creamy it is. I, I was just anticipating it. And <laughs> unlike Pattern, where I tried their conditioner for the first time, it was so creamy when it squeezed out of the tube, but when I applied it to my hair, I was like, let me try this again. So I tried it again on not as tangled hair, and it was a letdown. Something so creamy, but had zero slip. It's like, what in the freaking world? This has so much freaking slip. Detangling, silky. I mean, oh my gosh. I'm buying another one. I definitely have to. The smell is, is okay. I can withstand it. It doesn't make me sneeze. It has like a sweet smell that's not overpowering. That's actually quite pleasant, I have to say. The shampoo, it smells like lemon icing. It's fine. So those are my top performing hair products at the moment. I'm still gonna use melanin. I have to get more of the leave-in. I just think it's a fantastic product. I have to also play with the curl stretch cream, do a little mixy mix, but I think my, my standout products for hair for April, definitely the bread. 
I know they have a hair oil. I use my melanin hair oil, which is great for me. I don't feel the need to buy another one because you get a lot in the melanin and I, I still have quite a bit of product to work through so i'm good with that and now for the nail polish i have some creams on this side and i have some hollow on this side you know because i, I just couldn't decide the live love polish collection the cutie the cutie what is this called courageously cute <laughs> these are in the shades no one's maiden and so cute it hurts so cute it hurts it's like a a, a lime pastel dare i say let me get the right description so i'm not lying to you it says here a daffodil yellow cream polish daffodil yellow <laughs> way off and no one's maiden is the pastel cream mint when it comes to pastel creams pastel creams i get down with i know they don't have like the crazy finishes like a holographic polish does or even magnetic uh, dual chrome, triple chrome, all the chromes. When it comes to summertime, when and, and coming closer to it, I need the I need the pastel creams. I too. And these colors in particular are some of my all time favorites. They have the pink and the lavender, and more of like a uh, a periwinkle. I have not tried those yet because I've been rotating through a lot of nail polish. That's up next. But man, that collection. I have the whole collection. I bought it as soon as it dropped. I can't get enough. You do have to refine your pressure though. I feel if it's too goopy, it could bubble up. So it's just a matter of practice. I think it's worth the trouble because the end result is just chef's kiss. And then up next, of course, is from Hollow Tacos Pastel Rainbow Collection. Look at this box. I'm in, I'm in deep Hollow Taco. I have all the boxes ever since their first collection light and I'm not gonna stop. Should I? Yes. Will I? No. And last year they did their Rainbow Hollow collection, which is with the more red, like true red, orange, blue, and greens. These are pastel colors. And I wanted to do like the holographic version of the Live Love Polish. These two colors here, we have Mint Mojito and Lemon Spritzer. So Lemon Spritzer here is the more yellow and then mint mojitos like the more turquoise it's so hard however to see the actual hollow on camera so let me see if i get a flashlight on there there we go D do you see do you see the hollow it's so pretty especially in natural sunlight like direct natural sunlight or like uh you know those elevator lights Anything like halogen in nature in terms of light source is going to bring out those rainbows and they, I'm so happy Christine did the pastels. I love me a pastel holographic color. And if you have more holographic toppers, I didn't do it today, but you could like apply a scattered hollow on top of the regular linear hollow and just have a ball, have a ball. All right, so we already spent nearly half an hour <laughs> on items that were not necessarily makeup but let's get through the makeup as quickly as i can and if you want to see more demos again those videos will be down below let me start off with of course the fenty beauty ease drop skin blurring tint this was hit or miss with many people but what i love most about this product is just the ease of use the fact that i could use my fingers to apply it i have shade 10 could shade 11 or 12 work? Sure. But because it's so lightweight in coverage, it just kind of matches with my own complexion shade and it doesn't look too light for me. I love the finish, although people have said that it clings onto dry patches or it didn't sit on their skin well. Even though I have like my scabbies here on and around my jawline, when I moisturize well, especially when I use my Cos RX Snail Mucin Serum, my Power Essence, I find that the Ease Drop blends pretty well, that I don't find that, that texture that just sits on the skin. It looks very artificial and grabs onto those, those dry skin edges. So I've been really liking it, but I can understand how others are like not so crazy about it, which is totally cool, but I'm happy that it worked out for me. And what I especially love to use it with is the KVD, Good Apple Foundation Balm that just exploded the internet. Now, I think people were not expecting this balm 
to have the finish that it does. When I see Balm, I think Emollient, I think Dewy. This actually has a soft matte finish. And what's remarkable is that it feels quite emollient in the pan, but the minute you apply it on your skin, you can like feel that, that soft matte finish that I feel maybe not as ideal as the East Drop. I think the East Drop has a little, just a little more emolliency than the KVD Good Apple, or like I used to call it, Apple Bottom Foundation. I have this in Tan 60, and I think it phenomenal, especially when I combine the two, use the East Drop on the center of my face and the KVD around the perimeters, especially that's, those are the sections where I have the most hyperpigmentation and where I think more fitting for a formula like that with as much coverage as it has, which is one of the reasons why I consider this a favorite, that you can achieve fast easy coverage just because it's in a compact like it is you can use a brush you can use a sponge if you want to scoop some out apply on the back of your hand warm it up then apply it on your skin you can do that as well i've been using it solo with the ease drop and i think especially probably appropriate to use when it gets warmer considering the dry down and how it's not emollient or dewy at all. I'm looking forward to experience it in more humid temperatures to see if it could really hold up against that hotter weather. Next up, we have the Dior Backstage Face and Baje Powder, no powder. This is like that jelly type of a formula. And unfortunately, because it's Dior, it does have fragrance but I'm happy to announce that the fragrance does not linger, so I'm not smelling it all day on myself. Very lightweight in texture, it has a little bit of radiance that I feel lends that soft focus and blur effect on the skin, and it doesn't lay down heavy, especially if you're not crazy about powder to begin with, but you want to set your foundation a little bit. So what you can do is use a lighter, a longer bristle brush to fluff this product on and the finish left behind is just beautifully luminous and I think does not look heavy, it doesn't look dry, is, is virtually undetectable. And if you look at the pan, there is a little bit of sheen that exists. I know it's hard to see on camera. I don't know if you can detect that on the swatch, but I do appreciate this not aggressive sheen, just enough so that your complexion does not appear flat, especially if you insist on using a pressed powder to set your foundation and you don't want it to look matte, you don't want it to look dry. This pressed powder not only can be suitable for foundation setting, but I think optimal to set your makeup something lightweight that's not going to cover what you already have on but will not disturb your cheek products will leave behind a smoother finish and will help those products look seamless on the skin i have shade 3n which i think perfect for all over and even for buffing if i need next we have the patrick ta she's sculpted cream contour and powder bronzer duo i especially love this cream product it has the plastic flip on the top, much like his blush duos. This is very lightweight. So if you feel you're not going to have any luck with this, this is virtually foolproof. It blends seamlessly on the skin. It, it practically blends itself. It's not as heavy duty as, let's say, the Danessa Bomb Contour, which I love as well and very easy to blend. Not saying that it's not, okay? I find though this doesn't pack as much punch, maybe more suitable for one who is not comfortable using a product like the Danessa product. Despite its ease of use, I feel definitely lighter in consistency and then it's paired with the bronzer powder that I think smooth, silky, it has a little bit of sheen as well and layers beautifully over the cream and it gives just a soft sculpt to the face that's not overwhelming, that doesn't look heavy on the hollows of the cheeks. And I do think Patrick needs one more compact after the deep one, because again, even though it looks deep in the compact, it applies a little lighter on the skin. And if he came out with one that was even darker than the third offering, I think that will be more ideal, especially since this is very lightweight in application. And the same thing goes with the Wayne Goss Bronzer Sculpting Duos, which many have compared or 
compared Patrick Todd to the Wayne Goss, vice versa. We have to give it up to the Hindash Butopsy palette. This, this really knocked it out of the park for me. So creative in presentation, but simple in execution. The fact that you had these beautiful gradients of pressed powder that were pressed individually, by the way, I've been using this freaking thing all month. The gradients have remained intact. The, the silkiness of these powders, unmatched. And I feel really simple to use. It's not intimidating. People who felt that it was, they can't stop using this. They have left me comments to say they were just shocked by how easy these powders are to blend. And again, they are just more confident in the application that they could go in a little heavier and it's not going to overwhelm the skin. It's not going to look like you messed up, okay? The way these powders glide and blend, they practically blend themselves, is extraordinary. And I think, again, Hindash was so genius in terms of how he presented so many different gradients of color in one palette so it could be accessible to several skin tones on the spectrum. I think it very friendly with a lot of skin types from dry to oily and you have all the colors here. I found myself especially just from cheek to eye application just use this palette and this fits in all of my Sonya G bags. The double decker one right here fits. This one here the medium fits. Even if I wanted to fill this bad boy with all the brushes, I could just slide this right in. Fits. Formula well executed. The design of the palette beyond practical. It has a decent size mirror considering the size of the palette. I mean, yes, I can't see my entire face unless I place it vertical like this. But listen, if I'm in a jam and I don't have, like, if I don't have a handheld mirror and I don't have a mirror around me yeah I'm gonna use this and it's gonna be fine wonderful wonderful product I'm so happy I purchased this and it makes me look forward to whatever Hindash has in store for his makeup line I mean I can't even imagine man if the highlighters if he ever does anything with highlighters or creams can you imagine a palette like that just to Think about it too much. I can't believe we're still on uh, cheeks, but let me, let's get through this. The Kaja Play Bento. Very simple in design. I love the Kaja uh, Bento eyeshadows, but what I partic particularly love this trio for is the highlighter. This highlighter, I mean, gives you bling like you won't even expect. And I like to use this just to top off whatever I have on. It's going to boost the shine and the highlighter in a way that will not look overly shimmery on the skin, but because sometimes it, it happens. These shimmery types of textures don't sit well on the skin. I find this formula melts beautifully and the color doesn't look too ashy. It kind of amplifies whatever you had there prior. I had the Dior, which I'm gonna mention in a minute. The bronzer cream is lightweight. It kind of reminds me of the Patrick Ta. Unfortunately, this does have a little bit of a fragrance, but not as overwhelming as, as other products that I have used before, like the, the Hermes whatever we're not gonna talk about that okay the blush is really nice great color i demoed this on my sephora haul video and that timestamp will be on the video really enjoy that trio i think optimal if you want to pack light and just need all the cheek products in one without having to carry three different compacts. Giving it up to the Surat Liquid Blush. Thank you to Surat for sending me these at the beginning of the month. These definitely emulate the mood and vibe of their Artistique powder blushes. It's like skin, I don't, this sounds kind of weird, skin in powder form. <laughs> so silky in finish and in blend. And to have a liquid blush product that gives you something similar, it's like blush watercolor is so lightweight and some may think it's too lightweight. I totally get it. Because of that, I think it's just so beautiful under powder blush. If you wanted to amplify the color of any of these, you can then apply whether it's the Surat 
blush or another blush in a way that's not only going to improve the longevity of your blush, but just give you like that ultimate flush look, especially if you only wear blush, you could then apply this on your eyes as well and then set it with your blush color. It definitely has like that watercolor feel and depending on the color like Cantaloupe has a little bit of shimmer but it doesn't look artificial it doesn't look sparkly or glittery or texture on the skin it just leaves behind a beautiful radiance that melts with whatever powder product you wish to apply on top and again it's going to intensify that blush look and the colors are just so well selected too you have the lighter cantaloupe orangey shade and then you have like a baby pink and you have like a really like heavy duty hot pink of a shade oh my goodness if if you want like that wash blush of color in a texture that's delivered seamlessly and i know people weren't crazy about the sponge tip i would just forego the sponge tip squeeze it out it's a, it's a twist mechanism swipe the product off Use your fingers. You can even use a brush if you prefer. You could use a sponge if you prefer. Beautiful application. Beautiful. Do you want to see a little bit of an action? Let's see. Ooh, parfait. Oh, well, I know if I may. So I screwed up and then I just take it from the sponge tip applicator. And I already have makeup on, fam. I already have powder on my face. And I found that this doesn't really disturb the makeup if you lightly tap you can be really successful in layering this on powder you, you see the difference Ooh, as I mentioned I bought some Dior not only the eyeshadow I'll, I'll get to the eyeshadow in a minute I have that on my eyes I also bought the highlighters now Dior always be coming out with some highlighters every year where is very similar so if you bought the highlighters from last year these might be the same I didn't, so I bought these years. The Dior Nude Luminizer Summer Dune in 02 Peach Nude. Just look at this embossing. It is to die for. This is in Peach Dune. It reminds me of Pat McGrath's Divine Rose Highlighter, but there's more peach in here. And I think a stronger peach flip. Ooh, this is just... Mar oh, not miraculous. That's that's the wrong word. This is splendid on top of everything. I applied it higher on the cheekbones for this look, but as a cheek topper, and it doesn't look overly shimmery, it applies beautifully on the cheeks. Again, without looking glittery or textured, the way it delivers that glow from within. And again, because it leans more peach, I think very appropriate to apply on your cheeks if you wanted. If you're deeper in skin tone, I think it will look also beautiful on the cheekbones. But I also have 001 Pink Dune, which could be a little ashy for deeper skin tones, for sure. So this is the color Pink Dune. So that definitely leans more cool. I have this today on my cheekbone. And when... <laughs> When you layer it over Peach Dune, it's rude. That's what I did today. I took some of my Surratt and just... It's too much. And I've already applied quite a bit since I did my makeup for this video. And still, it doesn't look like it's too much. Look how that just pops. I don't think the formula has changed from the releases... 2020 or even 2019 if you have any of those releases you don't need the summer dune collection i'm just telling you that fam i did not partake in 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 that release so i got the summer dune compacts and let me tell you the beautiful which leads me to then talk about their five color couture summer dune eyeshadow palette in 759 dune they also have mirage I do think this was the more popular out of the two. And this is what I have on my eyes. Just the embossing of the palette is gorgeous. And also, I think really simple to use. So you see you have the gelée type of a finish where it's just a one and done type of a moment. So I took this color all over my crease, lower lash line, the more brown shade, same thing on this side. And then I applied 
these two top shades, which have really nice sparkle to them, I have to say, in a way that's not aggressive, but quite beautiful. I think they have really nice adherence. So if you wanted that sparkle, which I think very summertime appropriate, easy to achieve, I feel a finger application more consistent and I think better in general when you want the most impact on your lid from these textures. And the middle shade here is like this golden topper type of a moment that not only can you apply on any of these, you can apply it on top to intensify the shine and the glow, or you could apply that color exclusively on the inner corner or even maybe a little bit on the brow bone arch. Fantastic, very different from their other couture palettes, which has a, a more diverse offering of finishes. You have the satin, a little bit of matte, a little bit of shimmer. So I do think these are better, again, in terms of you receiving a more comprehensive palette when it comes to mattes and shimmers and metallics, but the Dune palette is quite beautiful. I think very, again, summer appropriate. You can't go wrong. They, they definitely improved, or I, as I was told, their eyeshadow formula. But I have to say, I enjoy using a finish that's the, the gel type of finish with the shinies. Just using that on my eyes today. I think, although soft, really nice impact at the same time. And again, very simple in approach and not intimidating to use. And a quick update on the Charlotte Tilbury Brow Cheat. I originally purchased dark brown, thought that was a little too dark, so I purchased natural brown. I knew I, I, I should have just done the refill. That's the whole point of the new design, that you don't spend money or create more waste with the actual pencil but that you just get the refill so that that was my fault this brow was the charlotte tilbury and this brow was the goof proof from benefit you know as much as i like this i just wanted to mention this as an update in this video from the sephora haul video i do like this pencil i still like my goof proof more i just prefer the slightly more or slightly drier texture the goof proof has which i think allows for better control and because of that i could get through my brows faster not to say the charlotte tilbury sucks i do like it i could go with either if if for instance i mistakenly pack the charlotte tilbury instead of the goof proof am i going to cry about it no i got a brow pencil and that's it i'll get over it but if i had to pick I will still pick the Goof Proof over the Charlotte Tilbury. Again, I prefer the texture of the pencil. It's not as creamy, a little more drier, and just better for my application technique. And lastly, we got lips. We made it, fam. We made it. I know. This is a little long. Here I have the Dior. This is from their, their Summer Dune collection also. We are looking at the Dior Attic Lacquer Stick. This is more of a gloss bomb type of a moment. We're looking at color 420 Underground. It's more, again, like this bomb-like texture. I really like this color. It's like my lip color, but better. It doesn't have crazy pigment to it. It's more so, it sits higher than a bomb, and it has really nice shine. I think super simple to use, and this, this rose nude color is really nice for every day and pairs well with this eye look despite how warm it is it works out i don't know why but it does and then i have to give it up to the m cosmetics lip cushion tinted lip luminizer in venetian rose this has more shine than the dior and it oh, <laughs> And because it's so creamy, you got to be careful with how much pressure you apply. So you see there's a little more brown in there. The Dior is leaning a little more rose. I enjoy this as just my go-to lip product that I need to whip something on fast. I, I got a mask on, I know. But let's say I'm filming and I forgot to put lipstick on. I'll just slap this on. And I found that it goes well with a lot of my makeup, especially if I use the Hindash palette or, or anything in my, in my current rotation of favorites. That this shade meshes well with a lot of my, my makeup products, my, my color wheel, if you will. And again, I enjoy just the, the ease of use, the fact that it's like a bomb, but it has a little more 
tint to it, has a little more gloss to it to make my lips look real shiny. Shinier than the Dior. Mm. But I like the Dior because it's, it's, it's lightweight. And it won't... <laughs> It won't do that. This doesn't just break. You know what I'm saying? Whew, fam, I think we're done. Finally. If I missed anything, that's too bad. I already talking too much. Let me know what your favorites have been or not so favorites have been over the month of April. What you have your eye on. Maybe what you're skipping on, what we're laying low on because, oh my gosh, the money I have been spending. I'll see you down in the comments, fam. And until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you in here again with another review tutorial, monthly favors extravaganza, product review, or Saturday brunch chit chat. Take care, and I'll see you again soon.